Welcome to Studio BC Girl. My name is Eric Skolvgaard. Today in this little clip we're going to be looking at issuing a distress call using digital selective calling. All modern marine VHF radios uh, on the market today, uh, the fixed mount ones anyway, uh, have a built-in DSC. Some um, handheld radios are also available with that capability. Uh, the class you should be looking for is class D, class D for Delta, uh, which is the most commonly used uh, radio on pleasure craft and, and most uh, smaller commercial vessels as well. The uh, primary advantage of uh, digital selective calling is that your uh, distress call uh, can be made very quickly and accurately. Uh, quickly, well, it only takes a uh, press of a button, uh, hold it down for a few seconds, and your distress call goes out. Accurately, because it uses the signal from your GPS, uh, and so your location uh, is very accurate as well. Distress calls made uh, using DSC are uh, directed at all stations and any radio that receive the call will immediately raise an alarm. Uh, the alarm will increase in volume. Um, if you ignore it, uh, it gets pretty loud uh, eventually. A radio that's uh, issuing a distress call will uh, continue to do so until the call has been acknowledged. The acknowledgement is normally sent by a Coast Guard station. Uh, however, some uh, Class A and Class B uh, units that are available on uh, typically larger ships are also able to acknowledge the uh, uh, distress call. And of course, if you cancel the distress call from uh, your radio uh, uh, that issued the call, um, then it will also cease uh, to uh, repeat uh, transmitting. Two things are required in order for a DSC radio to work properly. Number one, uh, you must have an MMSI. An MMSI is obtainable from Industry Canada. Uh, you can just Google for it. It's the easiest. Uh, there's uh, some literature that has the uh, uh, web link for it, but it's easy enough to Google for it. Industry Canada and MMSI. Number two, uh, you must have uh, the radio connected up to um, a GPS. And all DSC radios will have what is called an NMEA0183 interface. It's really only two wires. It sounds a lot more complicated than it is, but it's really only two wires you need to connect up between your radio and the GPS. So go ahead and do it. It's not rocket science. And here's an example of a uh, digital selective calling radio. You can recognize it by the little lid here and the distress button underneath that lid. Um, and uh, the fact that it's hooked up to a GPS, you can actually see on the display, it shows a Latin long. Uh, it also has a little symbol on top up here in the right upper right hand corner uh, that shows the GPS is uh, currently functioning. I apologize for the reflections in this. Here's an example of another uh, newer radio. It has a built-in GPS, so you don't need to worry about uh, connecting up the uh, GPS. It's uh, all done for you automatically. You just have to configure the radio to turn the GPS on when the radio is uh, turned on. Here's another example of a radio that uh, can be used. 
It's a handheld radio. It has a built-in GPS and uh, a digital selective calling function. Okay, so I'm going to show you a distress call, but we're not allowed to issue distress calls unless we're really in trouble. Um, so obviously we can't uh, test this over the air. So what I've done is I've connected something called a dummy load to the antenna connector of this uh, radio. Uh, now this is a special little device um, that hopefully makes sure the uh, radio signal it uh, doesn't get, get too far away. Um, <clears throat> it should uh, ideally be uh, just dissipated by this uh, dummy load. There will be a slight leakage, uh, which uh, hopefully can be used to uh, pick up the signal by uh, another radio I have close by, but the signal that escapes should not be strong enough to alert the Coast Guard. At least I hope so, or else I'll be in trouble. Now, you can only issue a distress call if you're in grave and immediate danger. And uh, running out of fuel, uh, running out of beer, um, does not constitute a grave and immediate danger. A second thing is you need to have the captain's permission before you can issue a distress call. Uh, that, by the way, also goes for acknowledging a distress call. And third thing is that your GPS must be connected up to the radio and uh, turned on, of course, so it uh, can supply your location to the DSC radio. Okay, so here's the handheld radio we'll use for the uh, test. And you'll see the distress button is hidden in behind this little flap. And uh, I don't know if you can see it, I'll put the light on here. Uh, it's a little hard to see, but it is set for low power. And here is the radio we'll be using to receive the distress call. And again, that's set for low power, as you can see. Okay, I'll now press the little button here for three to five seconds. And it's transmitting. And here is the alarm. And you can see, I'll cancel the alarm. And you'll see the radio switch to channel 16. And the uh, radio here also changed to channel 16, and you'll notice it was set to high power. Okay, so uh, I did not get an irate uh, call from uh, the Coast Guard, so they clearly didn't pick up my uh, DSC distress signal. However, had it been a real call, uh, then all the DSC radios in the neighborhood would have been um, sounding a loud alarm for a period of time until uh, people uh, stop it by pushing a button on the radio. But common for all the radios is that they will switch over to channel 16, awaiting further communication uh, by voice. You have to keep in mind that the uh, distress alert contains your MMSI uh, and your position and the last uh, time that position was updated. It does not contain your boat name, it does not contain a description of your boat, or the trouble you're in, or the number of people on board. So you should provide that as soon as possible by voice on uh, channel 16. If you don't provide it, the only thing the Coast Guard can do is look up in Industry Canada's database and uh, see the information you registered at that point. So it's important you keep your um, MMSI information current with Industry Canada uh, in case uh, that information uh, should be needed. Unfortunately, many uh, DSC distress calls um, are not really made when people are in distress, but perhaps uh, some cases made by busy little fingers, um, and in some cases uh, adults that uh, couldn't leave that red button alone. 
Um, let me point out that it's still a distress call and uh, you are only supposed to issue a distress call if you are in grave and immediate danger. However, some radios, and, and not all, some radios have the capability to issue a distress uh, cancel message. And I'll now show you that. Okay, so here's how we cancel a call. There is a, uh, there is a button here that says if you press clear, you cancel the call. And then uh, I say okay. And it transmits a distress cancel. And this is what it looks like on the receiving radio. And we're going to do another uh, test here of a distress call. This time the uh, focus is going to be on what is displayed on a attached uh, chart plotter. Here we go. Transmitting. And this time we'll see the distress call went on the chart and with the MMSI underneath. Well, now you know how it works. I sincerely hope you never have to use that little red button. Good luck.